Hi folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery. Today we are making a super duper easy Lily of the Valley. Anybody can do this no matter what your quilling level is. We're gonna be using white for the flowers and I'm gonna be using this sage green from Quilled Creations for the leaves and the stems. I have a needle tool here. I also have uh, some tweezers. Some of these pieces are a little small. I have my Elmer's white glue in my needle nose container, a ruler because we're going to measure just a little bit, and then a work board covered in some kind of nonstick surface like wax paper is going to be helpful later on as well. We're going to get started with the leaves and the stem, the stem first. So again, this is called sage green. Any green will do. This is just one I had handy. This is one eighth inch in width and these pieces are about 17 inches long or so. I'm gonna be making a double thick strip to make a nice sturdy stem. And if you've been following me at all, you've seen this probably a hundred times by now, but we'll go over it for anybody who's just joining us. I like to fold my strip in half and then run a steady line of glue all the way down one half, being sure not to miss any space at all. If I do miss a little space, I'm just gonna go over it again, just like that. And then just get that little bit on the end. There we go. Then it's all a matter of folding it back up from the middle, sort of tricky to do under a camera, but there we go. And then we're just gonna squeeze it like a little zipper, zip it on through and do that a couple times in different directions to make sure there's no air bubbles and all that glue gets nice and smoothed out. And we're gonna let this dry. And once it's dry, it's gonna be nice and sturdy. We'll be able to curve it a little bit. That's all there is to do that. That is a little bit more than we need for one stem for these flowers, but I would go ahead and make two of those, two of those double thick strips because we're going to need um, some extra little pieces as well besides what we're using for the main stem. Now I'm taking two more of these strips and I'm gonna rip them into six equal pieces, about five inches long. The length on these is optional. These are gonna be for one broad leaf. These, these plants have kind of big flat broad leaves that are sort of pointed on one end. So there's six strips that are all about five inches and I'm going to stack them all up right on top of each other. This is going to look very similar to a multi-strip swirl. If you've seen those on my page before I've done some videos about them and I can link to those instructions in the description box for this video. This is going to be a very similar process. After I have them all stacked, I'm just putting a very, very small dot of glue in between each layer on the very, very end, just a tiny bit, and then get those all smoothed together. If you have a little damp paper towel next to you while you're quilling, you can wipe off your gluey fingers. All right, so now we have everybody in a stack and they're all glued together just on the end. You don't really want the glue to set very, very long for these swirls, but for this, it doesn't really matter because we're not actually swirling the end. And if you need to, like I did there, you can just run your tool or scissors or something down the end of it. Even your fingernails will do because I had a couple pieces that were kind of wanky, but I want them to be a little bit more curved. And this is the part where it's like a swirl if you've done that before. We're just taking each layer and just gently pulling to space them all out. You want them to be sort of even each individual layer you can move by themselves. You'll see that my one hand is pulling, but the other hand is gently holding all the layers together. I'm not really squeezing with that hand. I'm just holding all the layers so that I can move them all with the other hand and I'm not losing them. That's pretty much what we're looking for right there. Each strip is separated. If I didn't like what I did, I could move them back and forth because we haven't glued anything on that side yet. Everything is still able to move. But you want them all to be separated, kind of at an arc. Just a nice, wide 
leaf with a point on the end. Now we need to get them all arranged the way you like. You're gonna have your open ends here. And just like before, we're gonna add glue to every layer, going up to where my finger's holding them, all the way down. Each strip's gonna be a little bit longer than the last. That's what you're looking for. A little bit of glue all the way down. And then we're just going to push all those together and they're gonna make a nice little pointed end on that side. It's gonna be really good for blending into flower arrangements if you're making a bunch of quilled flowers and leaves together. This pointed end will just sit right in there nicely. So there you go, there's one leaf. You can make a few of these, whatever you see fit. But that's the look we're looking for with the leaves for these Lily of the Valley. Now we can get started on the flowers for the Lily of the Valley. This again is just a bright white paper and we're gonna be using six inches. We're actually gonna need three six inch strips for each of the flowers and each flower stem is going to have multiple flowers on it. So you can do this all at once, you can do it one at a time, whatever your comfort level is, I'm just gonna be making part of one now because it's a pretty similar process for each part of the flower, each petal. Like I said, these are really, really simple, but it's kind of a different look that you can put in your in your toolbox here. So I have my needle tool here and I'm rolling my six inch strip all the way to the end. You can use a, a slotted tool for this part if you'd like, that will work fine. And get it off my tool, let it open up, try to keep it even in my fingers to about there. I don't need to open it up super wide. Dot a glue on the end and press that to seal. And you're gonna pinch one side for a teardrop. And then what makes this flower a little bit different is we're going to press the very tip against our tool and give it a bend for a little curved end, just like that. That's all it is to it. That's each petal and we need three of those. Super duper simple. Now that you have your three, you're gonna to want to go onto your work board and we're going to put the flower together. I have two of the curved teardrops that are facing in opposite directions. I'm gonna put a tiny dot of glue a little ways from the bottom and stick those together. Kind of looks like angel's wings. That's what you're looking for there. Then we're going to put, whoops, this is why tweezers are helpful at this point. You're gonna put some glue on the underside of the third and we're gonna place that right on top. It's up to you which direction the curve goes in. It's not really gonna matter. When my hands get out of the way here, you'll be able to see. I put it a tiny bit higher but then right in the middle. And this is giving the illusion of sort of a three-dimensional flower without it being super three-dimensional. That's it. Like I said, super easy. Anybody can do this. This is only three shapes. They're all the same. And then you're going to make a few of the same. So I have three here. And after those are dry, and after my stem and leaves are dry, we can put it all together. So now my flowers have set and my stems are dry. I'm gonna run a bit through my fingers to make a curved little bit there, about maybe less than an inch long. I'm gonna need three of those, one for each flower. If you wanna put more flowers on your stems, you're welcome to do that. I'm just doing three for demonstration. So there I have my three little bits. And just a reminder, this is the double thick st uh, strips that I made earlier. So these are gonna be nice and sturdy little bit of glue on the end and then it's just going to go right on the underside of your flower right between the two pieces that you glued first it'll sit right in there perfectly and it's going to look like the flower is growing out of that stem because it's on a layer underneath i'm going to do that to all three and then we're gonna let those sit and dry and then we can 
glue these bits to the rest of the stem. Now, just to finish up, we're going to glue these three flowers on their little stems to the main stem. You can see the main stem, I have a nice long curve on that. And then it's just a matter of putting a little bit of glue on each end of these three small stems and spacing them out a little bit right on the underside of that curve. Notice I don't have one right at the very peak because that's just not how lilies of the valley are. They don't have a flower, sometimes a bud, but they don't have a, a full grown flower right on the very end of the stem. So I moved that first one back a little bit. That's it. Like I said, these could not be easier, but they're definitely a different look. So when you're putting a bunch of flowers together, you want a little bit of height. You want a little bit of a different look than just flat flowers that you're just seeing from the front. These are gonna be a nice addition. Then if you just want to have these flowers in a little bouquet by themselves, you can do them on their own. Maybe have them going in different directions with a couple of leaves. These also do grow in pink. So I have a pale pink version here. If you want to do a little color variation, you can do that. Like I said, these are super duper simple. Anybody can do these. If you have any questions, as always, don't forget to leave those in the, the comment section for the video and I'll answer them as soon as I can. I will also leave links to any of the supplies I used for these flowers in the description box. Uh, really, another good thing about these flowers is it, they only take your basic quilling tools. It was just quilling paper, a little bit of glue, and a tool. You don't have to use the needle tool. You don't have to use the tweezers. So this is a really good beginner project for anybody. I'll also leave in the description box a video for the swirl technique and the double thick strips uh, technique where I talk about that a little bit more in depth. It's about on edge quilling. Uh, and a lot of people have found that to be a little helpful as well. So while we're on the subject, I will leave all of that in the description box too. Don't forget, as always, to like and subscribe to my channel so you can be around for the next video. And I will see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.